Slim Jim's Liquor Store. A masterful purveyor of good times by all accounts. A jukebox bar with red cracked leather stools, old brick walls and neon lighting. A young rock star with dread stacked, never fools for boys with the bottles and all required remedies. Bras on the ceiling, exchange for the fizz, an open door policy to all who like it hard and fast, far from the feeling, strange though it is, that down those darkened steps outside is Islington, 2009. During that last hour of CBT you were played three times on the BBC and texts fly through to a phone on the blink as the tiger greets the afternoon departure. An awkward glance from your housemate Chris says it's far too soon for the Bombay bliss. A perplexed eye soon says let the fucker drink amidst wider scenes of determined debauchery. Hours pass by and the mood improves. Don't try and talk to the women in the booths. You're on gym's time now. This is voluntary confinement. Collisions with reality are always best at bay. LA woman, light my fire, play it dome and fight desire. Backdoor man, break on through, Mr Mojo may construe. No natural light, no clocks, no clue. A finger down the throat says you'll last till two. Backdoor man, break on through, Mr Mojo may construe. A wallet stuffed with customer copies of card receipts. A clammy forehead. Eight missed calls. Slim Jim, a masterful purveyor of good times. The best. My name is Matt Abbott, welcome to this week's Nims and Fugs Insta session. Um, these sessions have been running every week since the start of May. Um, I've really loved it, it's been a bit of a lifeline for me um, and hopefully it's been a bit of a lifeline for other people as well. Um, I'm really lucky to have had some of my favourite poets performing from around the UK and further afield as well. Um, and tonight I'm welcoming Elise Hadgraft, whose uh, debut collection was published by Verve Poetry Press last week. Um, Elise is a poet, musician, artist, model and purportedly quite odd. Um, I'm proper looking forward to this chat, so I'm going to invite her to join. I went all partridge then. I'm purportedly quite odd, uh, basically, so I am inviting her to join. Hello. Hey, okay. How are you doing? Hey, it worked. I'm very pleased. That's it. Now, that's the ad bit done. That's it done. Well, this is, it's weird for me. This is a level of intimacy I don't extend to everybody, Matt. Like, not even the guy I'm seeing. We're very much a lockdown, phones, no faces kind Definitely. of couple. So, Well, uh, I'm, I'm, thank you very much for agreeing to do it then in that case. I, I do realise it's a bit weird doing a gig to someone you don't know in your mi living rooms. but It feels, it feels very intimate. Knowing I'm going to read poems, like, directly into your face as well, it's like... I'm kind of like, do I do I just do I look off to the side? Do I try and stare you down? What? I mean, people have <laughs> used a range of approaches, but like I tend to sort of read from a book almost more than I would when I'm on stage, ju just because it it does feel odd. But I'll also, tell you, you what, can look it, at the screen. It makes, a, it makes a nice prop. However, when I'm reading from the correct side, it does look like I'm rather idiotically holding my book upside down. But it, it right. is because it's, it's a double one. It's a Which is very book. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you've been performing for like 12 years. -ish. Yeah, nearly 13, right. which is crazy. I have been about for a long time. Um, so, but always under different guises, I think. Right. So what I was going to ask was, yeah, is it a matter of you now sort of settling down creatively or is it just that you never saw publishing as your route? Because you're a musician as well, aren't you? And you're like a yeah. big it's weird. I was I was always the the person that said, "Oh, I'm never I'm never gonna publish a book because the permanence of it terrifies me." Um, mm. Because the brilliant thing, I've got a really itchy nose. Fuck's sake! <laughs> um, the really brilliant thing about performance poetry is usually everybody in the room is absolutely shy to drunk. So yeah. if you change some words or omit an entire stanza, nobody knows, nobody cares. You can do it differently the next time. Your poems can grow with you. They can evolve. You can change sort of words as you go along. Um, and getting them in a book kind of goes, no, this is, this is how they are now. Yeah. Um, but starting Corporation Pop, so the very similar to, to what you do, Matt. So the, uh, the electro beats and the sort of the spoken word got me used to the idea of permanence yeah because when yeah. you put things out when you put a record out it's like okay that's that that's there now that's yeah how that absolutely. Is. um what's weird is selling them that's that's what that's the kicker uh, yeah i hear you it is really tough at gigs it's so weird when someone comes up and, they, and they're like how much is it and you're like T tenner and you're like yeah. you know it's worth a tenner you'd pay a tenner for anyone else's book 
but yeah, no, I know. And you're like, you're like, I don't know. You sort of, you very apologetically take the money. The worst thing is, I've had a few people who say, can we just pop round? We'll just like throw a tenner at your head and you can throw the book back. And then you have to have a conversation with them and you stood on your doorstep with like a tenner in your hand and you're going, have you, have you paid me for my book or for this conversation? Like, where are we in this lockdown situation right now? Am I a prostitute of words? Is this... <laughs> I don't know i don't know but yeah it is a weird but you must feel good though holding it it must be a nice moment to have it felt yeah. yeah it felt real when the box of books arrived from verve who have been i will say now just the most fucking patient with me yeah. um because i have thrown wobblies all the way <laughs> through this process i'd be like i can't do it i can't do it anyway it's just it's not good enough it's not going to go to print this is um, I've disappeared off social media and Stu sent me little messages going, gonna, gonna come back? It would be really good if you were too. <laughs> um, so it's really kind of held my hand, which was, was so nice. Um, yeah. And yeah. yeah, and the box books arrived and I opened it up and I handed one to my, well, he's now nine, it was his birthday yesterday, I handed one to my nine-year-old son and he just sort of went, all right, and like just popped it off to the side. <laughs> I don't know. Film yourself holding it on TikTok or something. That might be more. I've, I have been threatening him recently. I was like, look, that's quite cool. We could be TikTokers. We could do TikTok together. And just watching him die inside is, is what I parent for. Yeah. Fair play. Fair play. Well, uh, do you fancy sharing a poem from your brand new book? Yes. Yes. Cool. Um, one, luckily, I'm going to start with one from the uh, Corporation Pop side, which is now there are no more love songs. And this is one I know off by heart, so I can read this one intensely into your face because it's a okay. love poem as well. It's called Salamander Street. Cool. The first time I saw you in person, not photos, you were walking towards me down Salamander Street in the heat of Edinburgh's steady ascent into summer. Sun at your back and a 1970s sheepskin jacket slung casually over one shoulder, you must have been chuffing, roasting. From that moment, I was hopelessly yours. It took four weeks to convince you to sleep with me, but touching the impeccably formed contours of your body spread across a single bed in Marchmont as 5am light filtered in through two thin parchment blinds was, without question, worth the indignity of pleading. You are still the most beautiful man I've ever seen, and I told you ceaselessly. A steady stream of heavy-handed compliments, I've not always been as good at this, called you my Adonis in loungewear. Just felt lucky to be there, really couldn't quite believe you'd so much as given me the time of day, a man straight out of teenage me's formative sex dreams, who cooked, who read real books, who regularly paused when we fucked to quote inappropriate pulp lyrics. Mother, I can never come home again, you were perfect and I was, well, me. <laughs> we parted ways in January, five days after New Year, and though I'm several bodies clear of your memory, I still routinely see you naked behind my eyelids. Around 5am, when our mutual aversion to functional curtains silently lets the light get in. Quality. That was absolutely brilliant. Hey. Love that. What a performance. What a way to launch into your set. Um, well, it's nice, it's nice when, when half of your book is like your best bits because this is the shit that you can do in your sleep yeah um yeah absolutely yeah so you're i mean i've seen you referenced uh, as a beat poet so i guess you always thought about well i mean you've answered this question already but performing on stage and like how it sounds that's always been your approach to begin with right yeah um, um and actually yeah. although they're sort of more page based um in mount olympus is empty they were all composed aloud and they were all designed to be read aloud but slightly you know strangely in your own home to yourself yeah. in your own voice Absolutely. as opposed to sort of the heavy layering that that poems written for performance by a certain poet tend to have as being better in the poet's voice yeah um because you work in quirks, quirks of accent and things into performance pieces. Of course. And then people go, but that doesn't rhyme. It's like, it fucking does if you're from Stockport, mate. Just <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask. I could tell you were from that sort of area. But yeah, Stockport, okay. But do um, you feel like you've benefited from Manchester's music scene, Manchester's poetry scene? Is that, have you... 
Well, I started in Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, right, okay. I started when I was at university in Edinburgh and I benefited firstly from the, the boom in performance poetry that happened around about 2008. It really, it really took off in Edinburgh. Um, yeah. And that's what led me to a poetry night, and that's ultimately what led me to the slam circuit and being continually second place at the slam circuit and slowly hating myself and the slam circuit and then retiring from the slam circuit and then using my retirement to try and wangle gigs. Um, because I was like, but I don't do that shit anymore, but you can pay me to come and do your night. Um, <laughs> so well taught. <laughs> but yeah, it was like... So it was it was a completely different style up there, and I um I kind of reached a stage where I'm really glad I didn't publish a book early. I will say that yeah. now, um, yeah. because I think there's a real race to the finish at the moment. It's like I've only been doing poetry for six months, and it's like if you've been doing poetry for six months, don't publish uh, a book. I know. I do feel like <laughs> social media is partly to blame for that because people see the things I, I want to do that now. Yeah. I want to do that now. I, I, yeah, I'm the same Absolutely. as you. Write stuff. Write constantly. But write for a bit, because no sort of violinist goes, I've been playing for six weeks, I'm going to audition for the Royal Philharmonic. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a craft, and I'm, I'm glad that I waited 12, nearly 13 years to publish, because yeah. I can look back at this book now, and, I mean, to, to be fair, some of it's a bit cringe, but there was nothing I could do about that, because the poems have existed for years. Um, but a lot of it, I I think, even as I get older, I'll look back on and go, you know, yeah, that was, that was, that was that time, but it also it was the best I could have produced at that time. Yeah, it's a time capsule, isn't it, of your, it's like a, this document of this part of your career. Yeah, recognising that I think is really important to be able to move on. Yeah. Otherwise well, you just criticise it for like, years. Yeah. Rounding. Oh. But I'm, uh, I was talking of Edinburgh, because I didn't used to, I used, didn't used to work in Edinburgh under my my actual name i used to work under the name annie fetterman and okay. she was uh, she was professionally angry essentially and i thought i would do the closest thing in the collection to one of those which is cool. all from the corporation pop side and it's called frownies nice you may be surprised to hear i don't get told i should smile more what i do get told is you should frown less he said you should frown less this moody disposition upsets me less sexy than rest rest in bitch face it betrays your age how do you expect me to stay faithful when the windows to your soul are so unwholesome in frame babe your body is a playground but there's just no getting round that plowed furrow seawall shallow sheer drop craggy rock on your cliff face and it's a shame pretty girl like you, unduly ravaged by the grasping hands of time. I suggest a quick fix, but you know how it is. Bitches just can't take a compliment. <laughs> you might imagine this is the bit in the narrative where I kick to the pavement my misogynist wankstain bay, tell him to away to his mum's spare room and Pornhub or Xtube or whatever the fuck it is you do when you're clearly not nearly mature enough to touch a real woman, wouldn't you? If only that were true. Instead, each night I go to bed with paper, on my forehead. Paper on my forehead that sets solid to prevent frowning, to tone down, smooth out, make the middle of my brows as crease-free as my dignity before he ever fucking told me you should frown less. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> the, and there's no wonder now I'm old I don't do that anymore because it <laughs> takes a lot of energy. Yeah, that was class. <laughs> oh, just what I need on a Tuesday night. Um, to be shouted at by a mad woman with bows in her hair. That's, oh, that's why I love poetry. It's great. I love I love being part of this community and part of this scene. Um, it's class. Uh, and like, because obviously I, I'm published by Verve as well. I know how good Stuart yeah. is. And like, just through being on Verve, I've met other poets like Nafisa Hamid. And you, you well, know, I'm, it's I'm just looking forward great, to. I mean, I've been hooking up with people online a little bit, but I'm really looking forward to some point in the future when we can all get together in the same room and be like, the family, awkward high five or something. You know, I just, yeah. I want to be able to feel the presence of these people that I'm sort of precariously getting to know through being part of this this publishing house. Yeah, um, the, the festival that we do is is top class. So. I don't know when it'll happen again, but <laughs> when it does. <laughs> but it will. But it will. I'm literally yeah, putting will. my box up, sorry. Just like off, off screen. They've fallen That's down right. and it's really annoying me. That's all right. 
That's fine. That's what I like. I, I do try and make me as, as laid back as possible. And also, I've just had my hair cut and then washed it. So I've been funnying about like that. So it probably looks like I'm really vain, but really, I, don't, I just don't look like that. But anyways, it doesn't matter. No one cares. Um, I, so, I dyed my hair specifically for this. I was like, I'm going to re-redden it. But... Well, I'm honoured. Um, so believe it or not, we're just over halfway through. It's just gone quarter Whoa. past. I know, it's mad, isn't it? So, if you've got any... Uh, were they both from the Corporation that, They're both from the Corporation Pop side. I'll break into the new collection, which is... If you want to, if you're happy to. A little bit different. Um, but I actually got some requests through for this side. And I will be That's reading this from book, because I haven't bothered learning it. There wasn't gigs when I wrote it, so... Product placement. It's, it's all good. Yeah, just... It is. It is. It is a very confusing. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 quite wonderful. Um. So yeah, this is the death of Medusa. Um. And I did put a photograph of this one up on the social medias. Um. But it's so small on there. I don't expect people zoomed in to read it. So I'm just going to read it to you all now. Yes. One winter. Having grown tired of mortal men who, lusting after dangerous liaison, come sword in hand to pound upon the mouth of sacred caves, fair cheek Medusa takes a mirror, turns stony gaze on her own face, and hibernates. Summer brings visitors. Perseus, in want of her head, leaves disappointed, proclaiming the whore of Sarpedon already dead. Then comes the artist. Reflected in ashen eyes, Medusa spies skin like dappled sunlight through pine trees. The gods have favoured him with a rare beauty and so too music. He sings boldly, composes melodies that spark heat in concrete limbs and Medusa softens. Her lover leaves with the autumn. Limestone and water, she crumbles. They're all really short in this side. Mm -hmm. I can just <laughs> blast through the pockets. Well, yeah, beautifully read. Beautifully read that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip straight on to. Let's see. It says this is my favourite poem in the collection, um, and this Great. is called "Very Last Love Song," and it's it's the least heavy on the Greek mythology. It's really only in there in brief mentions, but um, yeah. I found this idea of of radical self love quite difficult um i think particularly as an autistic person it's like that's a lot of pressure loving yourself that's a hell of a lot of pressure to put on somebody i'm just gonna go for radical self-tolerance like, <laughs> body you're doing an all right job at being a body today congratulations but my uh my friend challenged me to write because i write so much love poetry to other people and they were like write a love song or write a love poem to you um, and that's what this was born out of. And it took on its own legs and it's very sort of like wishy-washy at myself. This sounds so <laughs> narcissistic now. <laughs> I've, I've, I've over-explained it. I should have just left it at the title. Um, but yeah, this is, this, is, this is what that came out of. Um, and it's my favourite one in the collection, but not because it's to me, because I'm not that much of a wanker. <laughs> You waited 28 years to receive a love song. You've written dozens. Watched sparks erupt behind lovers' eyes, made grown men cry, manipulated time, stolen moments in ways a photo never could. You are good. You are good at poetry and love because you have studied extensively. Books have always been your best friends. This does not make you quirky. It makes you well-read intelligent, engaging, leaves me wishing I could dress as pages from your favourites, that maybe you would bless me with the graces you do paper. You are amazing. Complex conch shell strength enveloped by softness. There is no bit of skin stretched porcelain pale over this warrior princess I would not kiss. Yet you can list your imperfect... Uh, Let's try that again. Yet you can list your imperfections by heart and armed with well-practiced rhetoric. I've seen you demolish the numerous cities of yourself. You do not need my help. A pretty face may launch a thousand ships, but empires have folded with a single sentence uttered from your Cupid's bow lips. Lips I have bitten, rendered in crimson, tasted the iron of ancient civilizations and whispered my devotion in languages long dead. 
little goddess. You are possessed of an unexpected clumsiness, as though your legs, having perfected dancing, found themselves affronted by other forms of movement. I will shroud you in music. So when you sing, and you do, it will shake the very foundations of the places I am yet to take you. So, yeah. Fucking hell. That line about the legs that have perfected dancing and then are affronted with other types of movement. Bloody hell, that was stunning. Oh, thank so, you. So good. Oh, I'm if glad anyone, you shared that. If anyone has read the, the collection and does, like, want to talk about the poems in it, I am open. Just slide into my DMs. I really like talking about mythology and poetry with people, but I think I'm sometimes a little bit unapproachable. I've not got the... <laughs> I've not got the poetry community like secret password yet. I keep guessing it and I keep getting it wrong and they keep going, nope, try again later. Well, you're getting lots of uh, digital love hearts and emojis and compliments flying up the screen. So. Well, you know, it's it's 2020. This is this is food to me now. This is... No, I hear you. No, I'm, I'm sure... Uh, it'll only be a very short space of time when you feel like you're in the poetry. I, I don't feel like it's a... Uh, I know that poetry in general has got gatekeepers, but I think the spoken word community is very, very welcoming and friendly. And Yeah. It, it, well, it is. I think, I think fundamentally the problem is that I don't understand human interaction anyway, right. but condense it down into sort of, let's interact about a specific thing, and I just go, okay. But by default, because we're all poets, we're all naturally a bit odd and a yeah. bit geeky and a bit sensitive and a bit do you know what I mean like we sort of like even if you talk to totally different people because you're a poet you've got these certain so I feel like it's easy to get on with people I don't know maybe I'm chatting shit but no yeah. no I think I think I think you're absolutely right and I think I'll get the hang of it eventually doing things like this helps and having a chat with you Matt has been really yeah really lovely and I've, I've, I've been it's fair I've been shitting myself by it all day but it's actually it's really nice so, <laughs> well, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, so the book's out. I was going to say if you got anything to promote, gigs wise, but obviously not. Um, no. But like, what's what are you thinking? Are you just going to take a break from writing, or are you already working on something else? Or um, not that there's any pressure to. I'm just curious. The well, the the thing that I posted out the other day was the first new poem I have written in a very long time. I didn't realise what a psychic block writing a book can put on creativity because you're just constantly going over this this same sort of bulk of writing and trying to get it as as good as you can possibly get it and as tight as you can possibly get it and yeah oh my god punctuating spoken word poems is really hard um <laughs> yeah like that was that was i whipped them out of my notes and just went wow there's there's not a full stop in sight here is there okay <laughs> Yeah. Because you you know where the breaks are, you know the inflection, and then you've got to try to find a way to to translate that. And it's uh, yeah, it's interesting weird. though, because it makes you look at your work in another way, doesn't it? And it makes you feel, yeah. it makes you sort of almost revisit it, reinterpret it. It's yeah, it's it's useful, I think. It takes well, it takes it out of your hands a little bit because you you yeah. know that you know in a, a certain amount of time, sort of when that deadline comes up, you're you're taking this work and you're kind of passing it on to strangers and going made this and you Did can't stand over the shoulders and go oh no that, that line said like that yeah <laughs> set it free um, it's it's like a trip book. yeah um well it's five two so if you've got any poems that you specifically want to share yeah the time. i'll um i'll do i'll do one from each um Perfect. i'm gonna do one from uh, the corporation pop side. I'm lucky that my poems are so short because I don't have the attention span to write or recite long ones. Um, and this is called Sylvia Suspect. And you will not find this in Corporation Pop's back catalogue because it was actually a collaboration uh, with somebody from my past who you may recognise from the fanzine at the end of this collection. Uh, and he <laughs> dies horribly. And <laughs> despite the fanzine, guys, it's great. My mum made it. Um, <laughs> As, yeah, so I never get a chance to do this one. I've never done it as a poem before, so let's go for it. Brilliant. Sylvia suspects it's time to shake things up a bit, gets dressed, does her makeup every morning to the playlist she's had on since 2006 with limited editions, makes room for new albums by Jarvis, but that's about it. 
Still wouldn't kick him out of bed. It's becoming quite accomplished at impressions. Might just pass for human. Does an excellent rendition of lip gloss when she's drunk enough. Doesn't get out the house much. Much prefers her bathroom and an audience of one. Sylvia suspects they've got her sussed. Couldn't quite tell you who they was, but knows enough to know, you know. Sleeps with a phone under her pillow just in case. Checks applications on rotation. Places her faith in validation from strangers. Sylvia suspects the lies she tells herself are gaining on her. Only so far Valencia Filter can take it. I'm just going to pause here because this shows how old this poem is when it was only Valencia Filter. Valencia Filter was all we fucking had. <laughs> Only so far Valencia Filter can take her, only so much habitual behaviour before she concedes. To a caricature of a caricature, uh, blah, blah, from a carrot, to a carrot, to a carrot, just to a carrot, she's, she's seceding to a carrot. To a caricature of a character from books that she no longer reads. Sylvia suspects she'll always be a shop girl. Never fuck Jarvis Cocker, never amount to much really, still reads Rush Hour Crush on the bus to work weekly, plays the National Lottery, regularly lets horoscopes ruin her day. Sylvia is susceptible that way, a superstitious millennial that way. Sylvia suspects no one's really listening. Blames her failings on private education, the television that raised her and tits nature never thought fit to bring. Would have been a singer if only she could sing. <laughs> Quality. I don't want cock ups in that are going to haunt me on YouTube forever. No, no it's, it, it, it was fantastic. Um, have I got time Very to good. squeeze in a really, really short one? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is for the digital age and is relevant because as well as purchasing my book through my Instagram, you can currently purchase a nude print of me. So <laughs> there you go. Get get on it, guys. Um, put me in your hallway where I can stare awkwardly at you forever. It's called Digital Aphrodite. Call me goddess. Validate my vanity. Send me pictures. Missives signed with three kisses. Type them one-handed. Sweaty palmed. Is it the distance that makes it hard? Are you devoted? Will you worship only at the apex of my filtered thighs when you dream of me naked? Am I black and white? A Hollywood siren with little girl's eyes. Thank you very much, Matt, for letting me read yeah. some things. Thank you for reading them. Thanks for giving up your time and sharing up your work. Uh, I know it's a strange thing when somebody DMs you and says, do you want to do this? But I'm glad you did it. I, I love doing these sessions and I thought you were fantastic. Really good. I'm, I'm really, I'm really uh, anticipating like the next four weeks of these sessions so I can sit and be like, OK, what are we doing now? And then go, what, <laughs> I've been doing it since the start of May. I'm really lucky. Some of the people have agreed to do it so far. So, yeah, it's buzzing. And well, obviously, we can, we can all go back and we can watch the old sessions as well. They're all on IGTV, YouTube and Facebook, as this will be tomorrow. Hurrah! Cool. Well, thank you very much. You're an absolute yeah. diamond. And I hope to meet you somewhere at some In point person. with the family. Okay, thanks so much, Matt. Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye. Um, that was wonderful. Uh, yeah, at least give her a follow. Pound Shop Plath on here. H Y T S Poet on Twitter. Um, yeah, the book came out on Thursday. It's with Verve Poetry Press. Please buy it direct from Verve or from your local independent bookshop, not from those tax dodging bastards. And we'll be back same time next week, 7.30 to 8 p.m. UK time. My, my name is Matt Abbott. We are in some thugs. Thank you for all your beautiful comments and everything. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>